environmental steward is a good thing for any company, not just a car company. At Subaru, certainly it helps the brand image, but again, that's not the reason we did it. We did it because it was the right thing to do. Back in 2002, our parent company, Fuji Heavy Industry, challenged us to be zero landfill by 2006. At that point in time, uh, that was kind of an un unrealistic goal. No one had, had achieved that. We would go to a certain part of the line, we'd turn over the dumpsters, and we would say, okay, this is, um, this is how much we generate it today. And this is, we'd put them in piles, like plastic and styrofoam and cardboard. What can we eliminate altogether from the waste stream? If we can't eliminate it, what can we reuse so it never gets into that waste stream? When we create a, a stamped part, there's uh, excess material around the edge of each part that gets trimmed off in the process, and our goal was to reduce that as much as possible. By doing that one small little project that cost us no money to do, uh, we saved 102 pounds of steel for every car that we generate, so it was a huge savings. And we actually reduced the number of coils that we consume in a year by 425 coils which also used less resources, approximately enough energy to uh, power uh, 2,233 homes. In a lot of cases we had excess packaging, um, parts of the packaging, be it plastic or cardboard or wood, it was really unnecessary. The problem was is that we kept sending this material out several tons of it a year and we weren't getting any good environmental benefit of adding, so we reorganized that system and we send it back to Japan and we use it over and over and over again now. We had an idea that we wanted to reduce the amount of oil we used, lubricate the engine parts as we assemble it. The associates at that time had to actually take a bottle with a nozzle and spray oil inside in a circular motion. We just introduced air into this pump. The actual difference, which is very substantial, by hand, this much oil, and with our lubricator system, it's a very small amount, you can't even see it. After the car is primed, we will put a seal on all the little weld cracks to, to keep the water and moisture from coming into the car, and the excess that was generated from that was be thrown away. So we decided, well, here's a source of material that we could capture and recover. You know, we wanted to be able to not put the material into the rag, send it out to be cleaned, and, and it's gone forever. So they designed a process to collect that waste, and then we can put it back into the container. They actually did another Kaizen where they cut the lid in half and used that as the scraping edge to clean their spatulas. And we can continue with our process over and over and over again that way. About 20 years ago, when I read about zero landfill, I thought it was impossible to do. How could you have a manufacturing facility and not send something to a landfill? We could have just made cars here at Super of Indiana Automotive, but from the very beginning, we were environmentally conscious. Zero landfill means we've not put anything into a landfill since May 2004. You actually put more into a landfill every day from your home than we do as a company. Manufacturing a car can be a very wasteful process. You have a lot of steel and paints and plastics and caps and cardboards and pallets, all kinds of things. The first month that we started this, we had 200. 68 ideas that came to us from our associates. They dreamed up ways to recycle or reuse materials, reusing containers, sending them back so they can be brought back two hours later, eliminating a piece of cardboard that was unnecessary, reusing brass lug nuts. All those little things that were ideas that were generated by our associates add up to very major accomplishment. Does it really matter what type of bulb I use if my energy is coming from renewable sources? Can't I just keep using these incandescents? Well, I guess the reality is no, because by using a compact fluoro, not only am I helping to reduce carbon emissions, but I'm also saving on the amount of materials that go into producing these throwaway items. But the most important thing is if you are going to use one of these, because of the mercury that's inside them, you need to make sure you dispose of them responsibly. At the Subaru plant, they have a pretty cool way of disposing of their bulbs. A bulb eater that crushes and separates the fluorescent tubes into various parts for reuse and recycling. Last year we generated four tons of fluorescent bulbs here at the plant. And by using the bulb eater, we're able to break that bulb down into all of its different components. The glass, the metal ends, the phosphorus, and also small amounts of mercury. You know, even tiny bits of mercury can seep into the environment. So by using the bulb eater, we can capture all those uh, hazardous chemicals and treat them properly. Recycling saves energy, and that means saving electricity. 
The more we reuse, the less we use. Most of us don't have a bowl beater at home, which means that if you are going to buy a compact floor, make sure you take it somewhere where you can recycle it safely so we don't put any more mercury into the atmosphere. You know what the bad news about these is? Can't even recycle them. I would say that I'm a farmer, but I farm a lot of different things. Beauty in nature, green, is not the first thing that you think of when you think of the Kensington section of Philadelphia. Greens Grow is about creating an environment where people in a community can get the understanding of where our food is coming from. If people can see it, people can feel it, people can breathe it. It's the way things used to work. I don't think I've ever had a day that's followed the schedule that I thought I was going to have when I got up <laughs> in the morning. Greens Grow has had a positive impact on this neighborhood. I think that it's given people reason to believe that something good and something green can rise from the ashes of what was here before. We have a team of people who work here, people who are willing to keep pushing that rock up the hill. They know that once you get to the top, there's at least going to be a view. It's not been one huge thing that's, that's gotten us to where we are today. It's been these small little steps. It was just a matter of getting the associates to think of what they were doing uh, in environmental terms and, and using that Kaizen principle and apply it to environmental projects. Subaru's philosophy with regard to environmental stewardship has been it's the right thing to do. And if that's the case, then we ought to share it with everybody, including our competitors. It's too important for the environment, too important for the community and the state and certainly the country and actually the world. Mm -hmm.